Hey guys and welcome to a new tutorial. In today's tutorial we're going to be going over how to create this cell shaded kind of look. Uh, we can see this working here if we just move the light a little. Uh, we can see the way that the shadows are affected and you can see the way that the banding works. So a couple of things to keep in mind before we start this is that for this to work, you're going to lose emissive. So we can't really use emissive. Roughness will also not work for this technique and neither will metallic or specular. So it's a bit of a trade-off. If you want this kind of effect, you're gonna lose emissive, roughness, metallic, and spec. Um, but if you're going for a stylized look, you're probably not gonna be using PBR anyway, so you're not gonna need those. This will still work with diffuse and normal maps. So, it's actually really simple. Um, so I'm just going to quickly, well I don't need to delete these shapes, I'm going to leave these shapes here. So what I'm going to do is delete my post process, boink, and then you, oh look we've got sky again. Now the reason that the, the sky was gone was because the sky works on an emissive. The, the sky is actually all emissive um, in the material, so that's going to disappear while we're using this. Um, so you will have to create a non-emissive sky sphere texture and then use that. So the first thing that we're going to do to, to make this is we're going to go through the post process. So over here in the left where we have modes, if you search for post process, you can get a post process volume. We'll drag this in. Now if you're starting with a starter level, you might already have this, but uh, just delete that one and, and we'll start with this one so you can guarantee that you're getting the correct settings. So what we're going to do first is with this selected in the details panel, we're going to search for unbound and we're going to tick this. This means that this will affect everywhere. We don't have to be just inside this box for it to work. The next thing we're going to do is go to bloom and we're going to tick the bloom intensity, which is set to default of one. And we're going to turn that to zero. We don't want any bloom. So you notice the difference there. If I press one, so you notice the tops of these shapes are shining or, or giving off a small amount of light that's reflecting this bloom. We're turning that off. So we're setting bloom to zero. Next, we're going to search for exposure. And under auto exposure, we want to turn on minimum and maximum brightness and make sure that they're both set to two. Oh no, you're playing Starbound. Why is that still open? Come on, go away. Right, so minimum and maximum brightness is now set to two. So we're getting, you know, a, a clamped value of, of brightness. Right, got distracted with the steam. So that's the post process volume pretty much set up. We don't have to do anything else with the post process volume except for when we add the material afterwards. But before we do that, we're going to make uh, this thing. It's basically an inverse color lookup table. So the top is going to be our shadows and the bottom is going to be where's lit. So we're going to go into Photoshop and I'm going to quickly show you how to make this thing. So we're going to say file, new, and we want a width of one pixel and a height of 128 pixels. I'm just going to zoom in a little bit. And we're going to pick a color. I already have this dark blue color for my shadow picked, and I'm probably going to pick the same color. So I might do some different colors so we can see it, and then I can flick between the two. So let's go to my trusty, trusty green. So I'm going to grab some green, grab a brush, and just paint a little bit of green in. And then I'm going to get the same green. This time I'm going to make it a little bit lighter, which will be part of our banding. I'm actually going to make this quite a bit larger than the previous one. There you go. Now I'm going to get the square select tool and I'm just going to select the... We'll start at the top. So we're going to select here where these pixels blur together because you see we have this one pixel here that's a different color. We don't want that because that's going to be visible. So we're just going to fill that area. Just click a few times to make sure that we get the actual fill. Then we'll deselect. And then we're going to do the same here. But this time I'm going to select white and then change all that to white so that's that now finished that's our, our light banding so we're going to have dark shadow medium shadow and then full highlight if you want the highlight to be different from white you can do so but we're going to be using a like diffuse on your textures anyway so you're not going to want to do that now we're going to save this as and i'm going to call this cell 
Bleh, I can't type today. So, clut, I'm going to put a 2 at the end because I already made the blue one. And we're going to head into our Unreal project and import this in. And now we have our, our second one here. Now we have to change a few things in here before we can use this properly. So, let me just close that back down so that we can see this as it would be default. So, what we need to do is sRGB, we're going to turn this off. We don't want sRGB. And now, also inside of texture, we want to just drop this down and we have our tiling methods. We don't want wrap, we want clamp. Well, the reason we want a clamp is because wrap will take the lowest value and wrap it around to the top value, but we don't ever want this to happen, so otherwise we're going to have a little bit of white up here and a little bit of green down here. We don't want that. So we're clamping it, so saying this is the top, do not go beyond this point. This is the bottom, do not go beyond this point. Okay, and then under filter, we're going to set this to nearest. And I believe that's that for the texture, so we'll press save on that. Create a new material. So shade two underscore m. So I already have one, as I say. We're going to open this up. Now over here in the material domain, we're going to change this to a post process. And then we are going to scroll down, and we have the post process material and blendable location. We need this to be before translucency. Now we're going to search for two scene textures. Well, we'll just get one. So search for scene texture and we'll get this one here and we're just going to copy and paste this. And the first one, the scene texture ID, we're going to change to post process input zero. And the second one, we're going to change to diffuse color. Now we're going to hold D and left click for a divide and we're going to divide the post process by the diffuse color. Then we are going to right click and find a clamp and we're going to clamp these values to between zero and one. Next, we're going to component mask the red channel because this is the only channel that we're going to require here. And now we're going to pull in our color lookup table. And we're going to plug this in. Now, if I plug this into the emissive color and we press apply, we can select our post process volume we can search for blendable. Now, under blendables, you'll have an array. You want to press add an, uh, add an array element. Boop, boop, boop. Now, under the choose drop down, we'll select asset reference. And we're just going to grab our second material, or your first one, and we're going to just plop that in. And now you can see what this is doing here. Okay, so you can see that this is starting to do some stuff. But it's not quite what we need. We need to to change some more things. So we're going to head back into the material and we are actually going to take from the diffuse texture, uh, the, the diffuse color rather, we're going to component mask and get R, G and B. We're going to hold M and left click for a multiply and we're going to multiply the texture sample by this mask and plug that into the emissive color, which allows us to get our diffuse colors back into the scene. There we are. So now you can see that is working. So if I grab our light and I move our light around, you can see we have the banding. Well, we're getting some weirdness here that's not getting the actual shadow. So I think that perhaps my shadowing on this is not quite big enough, so I'm going to just select a slightly larger area, grab the dark green, and fill that puppy in. There we go. Save that. Set back into Unreal. Reimport, and there we go. Yeah, my dark green was not quite big enough, which is an an issue that you might find that you have is that your your color isn't quite large enough. Um, your first band wouldn't be large enough. I mean, that band's maybe now a little bit too big, but we can live with that. So now you can see we have our, our highlight into our light and shadow into our dark and shadow. And this is how we get this effect. So if I can just grab my first and place that one back in, this is how we have a blue. I could go into Photoshop and I could say, 
adjust this and I could go to my hue and saturation. Let's just colorize it. And we'll change this to be more of a red. I'll just make it a bit darker overall. Oh, I know. If we make it too dark, then we're going to get red highlights. So we'll just leave that as the default. And we'll save this out. We'll say cell clut 3. I'll head back in. For that, I'm just going to quickly duplicate this one. Whoops. Although, in reality, you wouldn't duplicate this. It's still got the two on the end. So I'll show you what we're going to do afterwards so we can make this process a little bit more streamlined. So we want this to be in here. Boink. We'll apply, oh, apply that. And then we'll put the third one into the blendable instead. And poof, now we have a red. Which is quite weird looking, isn't it, really, in red? <coughs> so, excuse me. So to make that process of changing these a little bit quicker, and we'll get rid of these two. Goodbye. So I just have my original one. We'll plug this in. Now, what we can do is we can say, open this up. And the texture sample, we can right click this and we can convert this to a parameter. And we're just going to change the name because that name is very, very long. And we're going to call this clip. We'll apply that and we'll save. And now we'll right click and we'll create a material instance. We'll tick the little box here that says clip. And now what we're going to do is we're going to put the instance into the blendable. And now all we have to do is we just have to change this in here. And that will not affect our original material. The original material will stay as our default. Um, I believe we had the blue. Yeah, we've got the blue in the default. But the instance has now got the red. And we can just change that as, as often as we want. So there we have it. Um, as some some cell shading. Uh, this was picked up from Aaron Langmead, which is one of my lecturers at uni. Um, you can check him out by searching for Strangely Named in YouTube or on Google. He has his own website and he has his own game, which is awesome. Um, yeah, so I got this from him and I decided to make a video version of this because he has a typed version um, and I decided, you know what, I'll just show people how this how this works because it might get confusing. Um, it's a really cool effect, but as I say, remember that emissives won't work with this technique. Um, neither will roughness, metallic or specular. Um, for those, you can check out Aaron's channel, which is strangely named. I will leave a link in the description. Um, he has another version of this that works via Blueprint that can use those things. It's a bit more complicated to set up, um, but it's doable. And you guys should be able to follow that if you wish. Um, so there we go. I'm going to leave this one here. Um, yep. I'm sure there was something else I wanted to say. Yes, that's it. Um, I have, if you check my channel out now, if you go to my channel page and you go to my about section, I now have a link to a spreadsheet that shows you all of the requests that I currently have and what stage they're at. Now, I've done this because I need to keep track of them somewhere and that means that you guys can check that um, so I don't get any like multiple requests um, for the same thing or so that you guys know how far through I am with a particular request. Um, they're all labeled with priority so and, and complexity so that you can see which ones I'll be working on first and I've got um, updates for um, how far through planned they are um, so you guys can keep up with what I'm doing. Um, but I do ask just please be patient with my with re requests because I have to do my university work and other work at the same time as well as life and so I've got all this stuff to do and I'm just doing this on the side so sometimes I'm not going to be able to get through the requests as quick as some people would like but I am doing them for you guys um, so thanks very much for watching this has been cell shading and I will see you guys next time